So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Mark chapter 7 and verse 34, which is one of the passages in the Greek New Testament where we see words being quoted in Aramaic. And again, there are two main things that we're going to be doing in this video. First, we're going to be taking a look at the Aramaic word that stands behind the word that's being quoted in this passage. And second, since a lot of the work that I do focuses on classical Syriac, we're going to be taking a look at how this passage is translated first in the Old Syriac version of the Gospels, and second in the Peshitta version of the New Testament, which is the standard translation of the New Testament into Syriac. And like we talked about before, the reason why that part is so interesting is because Syriac is a dialect of Aramaic. Now again, it isn't the same dialect that Jesus would have spoken, but it's still part of the same language. So it's interesting to see how a word that's quoted in one dialect of Aramaic is translated into Syriac, which is another dialect of Aramaic. So let's start off by taking a look at Mark chapter 7 and verse 34 in the Greek version of the New Testament. And this is what it says. And looking up into heaven, he sighed and said to him, F fatha, which means be opened. And so notice that in this passage, there's a word that's quoted in Aramaic using Greek letters, the word F fatha. And so the first thing that we need to take a look at is the actual word in Aramaic that stands behind the word that's quoted in this passage. Now, in this case, there are actually a couple of possibilities. So the first possibility is that the word that's being quoted here is ith patacha, which is an ith pa'al imperative, feminine plural, from the verb patach, and it means be opened. And in this case, the idea would be that when Jesus gave this command, he wasn't talking directly to the person who was deaf. The idea is that he was talking directly to the person's ears, keeping in mind that the word ear in Aramaic is feminine. Now, the second possibility is that the word that's being quoted here is ith patach, which is an ith pa'al imperative, masculine singular from the verb patach, and it means be opened. And so in this case, we're dealing with the exact same verb and the exact same verbal pattern, but in this case, the verb would be a masculine singular imperative instead of a feminine plural imperative. And the idea in this case is that the command isn't being given directly to the ears. The command is being given to the person. And that's the way that it's understood in the Greek version of this passage. Now, the third possibility is that we're dealing with the exact same verb and the exact same verbal pattern but the letter tau in the prefix at the beginning has been absorbed or assimilated into the letter pe, which would have resulted in the letter pe being doubled. And that's something that actually does happen in the Aramaic portions of the Palestinian Talmud and Midrashim when the prefix if is followed by the letter baith, the letter pe, and a number of other different letters. And that's something that Dalman talks about on page 252 and page 253 of his grammar on Jewish Palestinian Aramaic. And one of the examples that he gives is the word ipasak, which should have been ifpasak. And so assuming that the verb that we have in Mark chapter 7 verse 34 is a masculine singular verb, that would give us the form ipatach which is a lot closer to the form that's quoted in Mark chapter 7 and verse 34. Now, the fourth possibility is that in the dialect of Aramaic that this quotation goes back to, the letter pe and the letter tau in the word ipatach would have been pronounced with the soft pronunciation of those letters rather than the hard pronunciation of those letters. So in Aramaic, the letter pe can either be pronounced with a p sound, which is the hard pronunciation of the letter pe, or with a ph or f sound, which is the soft pronunciation of the letter pe. And we have the exact same thing when it comes to the letter tau. The letter tau can either be pronounced with a t sound, which is the hard pronunciation of the letter tau, 
or it can be pronounced with an unvoiced th sound, as in the word thin, which is the soft pronunciation. Now, normally the soft pronunciation is used when there is a vowel sound that comes immediately before these letters, and when the letter isn't being doubled. So in the case of the word ippatach, we would normally expect the pe and the tau to have the hard pronunciation of these letters, because in both cases the letters are being doubled. So in transliteration it would be ippatach. But it's possible that in the dialect that stands behind the word that's being quoted here, that both of these letters would have had the soft pronunciation in this word. Now, we don't have any evidence for that apart from the way that the word is quoted in Mark chapter 7, verse 34. But if that's the case, that would explain the double PH sound at the beginning of this word in the Greek version of Mark chapter 7, verse 34, and also the TH sound that we have at the end of the word when the word is pronounced F. Fa, fa. And so if that's the case, that would give us a form that is very close to the one that we have in Mark chapter 7, verse 34, and it would be if, fa, thach, or if, fa, fa, depending on how strong of a pronunciation they would have had for the letter chayf at the end of the word. Now, the second thing that we need to take a look at is how this passage was translated in the old Syriac version of this passage and in the Peshitta version of this passage keeping in mind that Syriac is a dialect of Aramaic. So this is what it says in the old Syriac version of this passage. V'char bashmaya v'et tanach v'emmar le eth pa tach. Which means, and he looked into heaven and he sighed and he said to him, be opened. And we see the exact same thing in the Peshitta version of this passage. It says, and he looked into heaven and he sighed and he said to him, be opened. And so there are a couple of things that we need to notice here. So the first thing that we need to notice is that in both the old Syriac version of this passage and in the Peshitta version of this passage, the verb is understood to be an ethpa'al imperative, masculine singular from the verb pathach, and it means be opened. So that's the exact same verb that we were talking about in all four possibilities that we were just looking at. Now the second thing that we need to notice is that the letter tau in the prefix at the beginning of the word hasn't been absorbed or assimilated into the letter pe, which like we said may have happened in the dialect that stands behind the word that's being quoted in the Greek version of Mark chapter 7 and verse 34. The third thing that we need to notice is that the letter pe and the letter tau in the second part of the word both have a hard pronunciation in the Syriac version of this verb. And of course that matches up with what we would have expected to see in the Aramaic word that stands behind the way that this word is quoted in the Greek version of Mark chapter 7 verse 34, but it doesn't seem to match up with the dialect that stands behind the word that's being quoted here. And the last thing that we need to notice is that the last part of the verse is missing where it says, which means, be opened. And the reason why that's the case is because the word ethpatach already makes sense in Syriac, so it doesn't need to be translated. And again, that's because Syriac is a dialect of Aramaic. So that's Mark chapter 7 and verse 34. In our next video, we'll take a look at Mark chapter 14 and verse 36 where we see another word that's being quoted in Aramaic. Thanks for watching.